So you'll often see me posting up my Betfair trading results, either individual markets or perhaps an entire day. And there's a very good reason why I do this. It may not be why you think, uh, but it tells you a lot about how I trade and also how I manage losses. And if you want to find out what that is, then watch the rest of this video. Please like and comment on this video. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them. And if you're interested in learning from somebody that's been doing this for over 20 years, then subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you want notification of new videos as they're released. So why do I post my Betfair trading results? Now, sometimes I do wonder myself. <laughs> Just before I press that button, I'm thinking, you probably don't need to do this. And then I press it. And by and large, people generally understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it but inevitably you get a small minority who simply just do not get it. But there are some really clear reasons as to why I do. And, um, you know, primarily, you know, one of the main reasons is I want you to know that I'm still doing this. In an industry dominated by opinion and very little fact, um, you, it, I think it's really critically important um, that you have uh, the knowledge that I'm sat here, you know, on the same software that you're using, clicking away, doing the same sort of stuff. I'm sharing those big highs and those lows with you, going through that whole experience of emotions. Um, but obviously, you know, my incentive is a bit different from yours. Um, but nonetheless, you know, this is absolutely the job that I was made to do. Um, I love every aspect of it. And um, I'm so glad that I ended up in this particular place. I never would have expected all those years ago that I would have ended up here, but I love it. <laughs> so even without any other incentive, I would still be here doing it. And, um, you know, I've traded, I don't know how many markets I've traded this year. I've traded a lot of markets this year. Um, but every now and again, so, you know, early in March, you would have seen that I traded all 28 races at Cheltenham in profit. Got a cracking result from the US Masters Golf recently. Uh, but last weekend, what I actually did was I, I put up a tweet that basically was saying, this is a good example of correct money management because I lost 15 races um, out of the, the number of races that I traded. And this is where I ended up on the end of the day. Now, this wasn't an exceptional day by any means. If you look at the previous Saturday, that was very similar. I'll explain the differences between the two in a second. Um, and if you want an exceptional uh, day, then I can describe that to you as well. But the reason for doing the tweet was actually this was a good example of exactly what your objective is when trading this market in this particular style. So what I was doing here was I was trading pre-off racing. So I was in the market five to 10 minutes out. I was exiting at or about post time. And I was in the market for just a small period of time. Well, I say small period, five to 10 minutes, sometimes a little bit shorter. Um, but basically when I hit that hedge button uh, at or near post time or near the off time, uh, that was the result. Win or lose, that was my result. This wasn't betting. Um, it wasn't, uh, you know, laying horses or anything like that. This was proper, pure trading. And this is why I love pre-off horse racing trading. A, because there's so much of it. Um, but B, it's a, it's a pure trading market. The, the outcome is not influenced by any other factor. So if you trade this market at random, you will get truly random results. If we back a horse 10 minutes out and then we trade out at post time, you will find that 50% of the time you win money, 50% of the time you lose money, and you will end up at break even overall. If you do a value bet and you lay a horse at sixes, you're going to win 83% of the time. If you do that in running and you do a small trade in running, um, you're going to win at a much, much higher percentage rate. And what we're talking about here is the base rate. The market base rate for pre-off trading is 50%. If you do it completely at randomly, you will be um, getting a 50% strike rate. Uh, you will be neither making nor losing money, but you will basically uh, hit 50%. Now, when you look at the results that I posted, um, what you will find is that if I've lost 15 out of 54 races, then actually my strike rate is 75%. So there contains some information. I am trading at 25% above base rate. Um, I am doing something that's allowing me to pick off those trades um, and elevate my base rate much, much higher. So 
uh, my theoretical edge there is, is quite large. But because I'm trading, I can't make thousands on each individual race because I'm only ever going to earn a percentage return on my stake. So if I have a £500 stake, I'm ne never going to risk that £500 in the market. The way I'm looking at it on pre-off racing is I'm going to put £500 in the market. I'm going to take £500 out and I will win or lose a small chunk of that money. So um, when you look at those losses, um, you can obviously tell that those losses must be relatively small in proportion to the gains that I've had. But part of that is because the, the strike rate is quite high anyway. I can afford to have slightly bigger losses than my gains anyway and still make money. Rather than try and explain the maths behind that on this video, I've actually done a great little video, even if I say so myself, that talks about how the strike rate interacts with the win and loss rate um, on individual trades. If you want to watch that video, that explains in beautiful depth exactly what your trading expectancy is. But you'll also do it via uh, a bit of money management as well. And this goes back to the first slide that I showed you. Let's have a look at how we can create a positive expectancy when we're actively trading. Um, so the most important thing to understand when you're trading any market is what is that base rate and how do you measure your success above that? So you can see I'm winning 75% of races um, and I'm losing 25% of races, but obviously that puts everything in my favor as long as I don't let those losses get out of control. Now, the interesting thing about um, the way that the market behaves is uh, when I was in San Francisco recently, I picked up uh, this little device that I'm gonna bring up on the screen here and it is called a Galton board. And uh, what this does is this uh, basically demonstrates the concept of uh, a normal distribution. So this is a pre-off racing market in, in effect, because what's happening is that most of the results will be plus or minus nothing, but every now and again, you can get an exceptional result, um, either positive or negative. So one of the key ways that I trade is to try and avoid some of those losses. And the, the, there are a number of ways of doing that. Now, when I first started trading, what I was actually trying to do um, was to not make mistakes. That's where I suggest you start. I looked at the market, could see it was 50-50. And I thought, well, if I do this, if I do that, how does that influence what I trade? But I went into the market and I traded every market exactly the same. And the problem was every now and again, I would get that bell curve on one side where I'd get a very large loss. So my attitude to minimizing that was to identify what races that would tend to occur on and then not trade them. You know, not getting yourself into that position in the first place is actually a great way of improving your trading. So you're not under the obligation to trade every race. If you turn up to a race and you sort of think, I have no idea what's going on here. Don't trade it. It's a brilliant way of avoiding a loss. Um, so when you first start trading, it's likely that you'll have one strategy that you're predominantly using. And if you apply it across all of those races, some of those races, it's just not going to work very well in. So your first step to move yourself towards profitability is to eliminate those races. Don't trade them. Now, one of the reasons that I can trade 54 races in a session is that I've got a strategy for pretty much every market. Because if I look at one market, I think, well, that's probably going to work here. That will probably work here. I'll change my style here. But that's something that just comes with experience. So when you look at my p &L, that's 20 years worth of experience in there of doing this. But also look a bit deeper at that. There's 54 races, 972 pound. If you divide 972 by 54 races, you'll end up with an average per race of about 18 pound. So if I said to you, go out and make a thousand pounds today by trading on the racing, you would probably go, huh, uh, how am I going to do that? But if I said to you, your objective is to make like a 10 pounder race today, um, or even let's say an average of two pound a day, that's much more achievable. So if you did, if you made two pound per race on average over 54 races, you would end up with 108 pound overall. And that tiny objective is much more achievable than stretching for a much, much bigger target. So one of the things that I'm doing when I'm approaching each of these individual races is I'm basically just trying to sort of stay out of trouble, but get a little bit of money out of the market. Um, and I don't really, you know, it, I could start the day with four losses and then three wins and two losses and then seven wins and then a couple of bigger losses. Or I don't care. I don't set myself a target and say, right, I've got to make a thousand pound by the end of the day. How am I going to do that? 
because that forces you into errors. But if you approach the market in a systematic and structured way, you just chip away at each market. You don't pay too much attention to what happened in the market before, whether it was a loss or a profit. You just chip away and you keep doing what you can. And at the end of the day, you fire up and look at your PL and you think, oh, that went well. But your objective really is stretched out over all of the races that you're going to trade. They're not sort of compacted into a specific objective. And by doing that, then you automatically trade better when the opportunity is there and you trade more defensively when the opportunity isn't there. So if we look at that result in the summer, that result would be much larger. Why? Because there would be more races. It's as simple as that. If I did an average of £18 over 70 races or something, um, or even more than that, then obviously naturally you would get a better result at the end of the day. So that this is why I say that like winter is, is not as big as summer because the number of races are shrinking and rising all of the time. So yeah, you know, picking opportunities, uh, treating your objective as a broader one uh, is a good way of being able to cope with losses. Uh, but in, in terms of looking specifically at what I do to avoid losses, when I'm in a market and you know, a position goes wrong. People often say to me, it would be great if you could show me a losing trade. But I disagree because what would happen, I, I'll show you one if you want, is I go into a market, I try and take a position, it doesn't work out, so I exit it. There's, there's no information in there. <laughs> I went in for a specific reason, it went wrong, so I closed my trade. And that's all I do. I don't do anything to try and recover the trade because that turns your trade into something completely different. I have a fixed stake. I'm looking for it to do something. It didn't do something. And so I, I exit my position. And it's as simple as that. I don't double up my stakes. I don't get more aggressive on the next race or anything like that. It's just, OK, I got that wrong. Next market, please. You know, come on, let's let's get the next one up. Um, and I just trade systematically through the day just like that. I don't do anything clever. Now, there are some ways of minimising losses. Like I said to you, you know, pick a strategy that's suitable for the market. If you don't know what you're doing or you don't think it's suitable for the strategy, avoid it. That will minimise your losses. But also, I tend to participate in markets where there's a lot of liquidity. And one of the reasons for doing that is that if there's a lot of money coming through the market, I can get rid of my trade straight away. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to get my trade out of the market in a, you know, and... If you're in a weak market and there's no liquidity and you're trying to exit a position that's going against you, you'll just make it much worse for you. So if all of the conditions aren't there for me to do the trade and to be able to exit cleanly, I won't do it. And I just have to accept that that market isn't going to work and I move on to the next one. So, yeah, um, bear that in mind as well. That's another way to sort of tip all of that in your favour, because ultimately what you're trying to do with that Golden board, uh, if you see it on my shelf, it's actually tipped slightly to one side because that's how I trade. <laughs> I'm not looking to for some amazing mega trade and waiting all day for it. I'm not, you know, doing something to avoid losses. All I'm trying to do is I accept that the market is sort of going to be a 50-50 shot and I'm just trying to tip it gently in my favour just by taking slightly better positions and slightly better markets with roughly the right strategy. All of those sort of things are the, are the way that I'm actively trading. It's fundamentally um, the same way that I, you know, have traded for many years. There's nothing dramatic about it. the market shift and the strategy has changed slightly. And, you know, you may get into the market earlier or later or use bigger or smaller stakes or whatever. Um, but fundamentally, that's how I trade. And, and that was why I posted that information is because it gives you, like I said, a really good example of exactly how good money management should work. If you don't let your losses get out of control, then you won't... Uh, destroy a lot of the profits that you've made on the other side. And on this particular day, I didn't have any significant negatives. Um, I had a few, I can't even remember what they were, but if you look back over the last month, I've probably had a few races where I've lost a bit somewhere between 100 and 200, but that's dwarfed by the trades that have gone particularly well. So if you look at the best Saturday I've had uh, inside the last month or two, um, I would have earned somewhere just over, I think, I do remember the day now. I, I earned about just short of £3,000, basically, over the course of the day. And um, that average was pretty high as well because I traded a, a smaller number of races. How could I possibly achieve that? Well, it was Champions Day at Ascot. Much bigger markets, uh, much more liquidity, uh, bigger targets to hit um, in terms of like the, the size of the race and stuff like that and how much they stood out from the rest of the card. 
So naturally my results would rise, but I didn't post that PNL because that was the benefit of 20 years worth of experience. I wouldn't expect somebody to be able to do that or on the same sort of scale. But if you look at the one that I posted last Saturday, which is very similar to the Saturday before that, that's much more realistic. My average um, the last Saturday was 18 pound per race. Saturday before that was 14 pound per race. Tomorrow, it's gonna to be somewhere in that ballpark. And there will be a few feature races that hopefully I'll be able to put a little bit more money through and be a little bit more aggressive. But by and large, what you're trying to do is accumulate that profit over a period of time. You're not looking to do anything weird or special in order to get to that total. And that's primarily why I highlighted uh, that screenshot from last week, because I thought it was a good example of that. So the key takeouts uh, from this video should be when you set a target, don't set a target. Um, it's going to go up or down over the course of the year based upon the number of races, the quality of races and stuff like that. And ultimately, you shouldn't be setting targets anyway. You're just trying to do the best you can in the markets that you've chosen. And that will allow you to build uh, a better result overall. You shouldn't really primarily say that you're going to aim for something. You just try and do the best in each market that you have. If you want to avoid losses or minimize the chance of getting a big negative, make sure that you pick and choose markets that are suitable for your strategy. I've managed to build that up over a large number of years. So if you're starting out, you'll find if you're using one particular type of strategy, it may work better on some markets than others. So just avoid the markets where it doesn't work as well. And that will immediately lift your results up to that level. But also think about it, have a trading plan when you go into a particular market, have an idea of when it would work well and what you will know is giving you an indication that it's not working so well. And then you exit your trade at that particular point. But in order to do that, you've got to have a process, a plan on how to do that. But also you need the liquidity to do it so you can exit that trade at, the, at a minimal loss or the smallest loss that you possibly can. But you've also got to accept that Sometimes when you do that trade, you're going to have to have the humility to say, you know what, I've made a mistake, I'm getting out of here. But you've also got to accept that that's done and dusted. You can move on to the next market. And by the end of the day, it probably won't matter anyhow. So, yeah, you know, when you're actively trading, that's the way that I suggest you trade. And hopefully uh, looking at that p &L that you saw, that will give you some confidence and reassurance uh, that that's exactly how I trade uh, and something that you should aim to replicate. And that's primarily one of the key reasons for making a post like that. Anyhow, I hope that that is useful for you, you take some of that on board um, and that it positively influences your trading going forward.